I'm happy to be here with you all today uh, to talk about an introduction to the Cisco Platform Exchange Grid, uh, or PX Grid, as I think almost everybody knows it in ICE. Uh, this is designed to be basic, but we are going to be doing some uh, like Linux command line stuff with, with curl. Uh, it's going to involve doing some GitHub repos and uh, Python scripts and things like that. So for some of you, this may be actually more of an intermediate uh, course, uh, but hopefully this is going to be very educational. That's the that's the goal. Uh, we previously had a similar webinar called Working with ICE PX Grid APIs uh, by one of our awesome uh, senior uh, CX engineers, uh, Victor Botbrov. Uh, but he went kind of really deep um, into, into PX Grid and how it works with curl and Python and doing different things. What I want to do here is kind of dial it back a little bit and basically kind of walk you through some of those basic things in code, showing you how you can do some of this stuff to get you started. Um, so we're going to go through uh, basically how PS Grid works, talk about how our partners use it, if they're part of the Cisco Security Technology Alliance to do integrations. Uh, we also do it with our own uh, Cisco Security products. Then we'll go through basically how you how, how, how it works um, and go through um, how you enable it, get the code, and go through some of the, the practical things. That way, if you want to someday be able to create your own custom client, you can you can see the libraries and things to do stuff like that. So kind of get you oriented into what we're talking about with PX Grid here. Uh, ICE sits in the enterprise working with network devices to authenticate users and devices coming into our network. Um, and also our own Cisco DNA Center can provision network devices to talk with ICE as a, their AAA server, um, and it works through ICE with not only REST APIs, but also PX Grid to get live um, updates, and we'll go through how that works. Uh, the way that it's usually used with PX Grid is on the security side. After we authenticate users or endpoints with identity services, we can share what we call context out to those security partners um, and so this is really where we're going to be focusing is our, our time uh, today is, is out here on how ICE really works on the back end. Uh, then if you think about how ICE works, um, depending upon how large your network is, you may or may not be uh, familiar with, with all these things. I'm going to go through them real quick. Uh, we have the ICE PAN node. This is the one that you usually do all the configuration on. We also have a, a not really a node, but it could also be what we call a persona. All these personas could be on a single ICE node. Um, so if you have a small deployment, all these things are on a single ICE node. So we have the MNT persona, or, or it could be its own separate dedicated node. And then we also have the policy service node or persona. And finally, we have the platform exchange grid node or per persona. So this is where all these services are running uh, that we're going to be doing today. Uh, and just to kind of give you a sense of how all these things work together, let's go through the different node services. So if you are the ICE admin, you're going to log in and configure it, right? And then you're probably going to configure some policies for network access control uh, with some network devices and things. And that's going to go get provisioned out on the on the PSN. It's going to take those configs uh, so that it can process those incoming requests via radius when they come in through those network devices when users log in. So once that happens, all those things are going to get logged to the MNT node or persona. and can be shared in the the UI as you're probably familiar with live logs and things like that. Uh, what you may or may not know is that we can also share context out through the PX Grid node. And where this is most popularly used is with uh, TrustSec and what we call the session directory. So whenever new endpoints come on, we can actually immediately asynchronously notify any listeners that are subscribed to these topics um, to understand when there are new tags, new updates, new sessions coming into the network. And that is how our partners or other security uh, products and services are able to subscribe to PX Grid in order to uh, get those updates. And then the other cool thing is we have something called Adaptive Network Controller, ANC. And because we have a trusted relationship with those products, if they are able to detect 
bad network behavior or vulnerable endpoints that we just let on the network, right? As long as they authenticate, we trust them to let them on into the network with the right uh, privileges. But if suddenly they turn uh, malicious or doing something wrong, we rely on those other security services to tell us. And that's where they can use adaptive network control to make a change in their their authorization through ICE. You can do a change of authorization and then we'll update the status on that on their session so that they can't, you know, keep causing problems on the network. So that's how all those things relate. Again, this is where we're going to be focusing our time. So to kind of give you a sense of how this all works, I want to start off by just jumping right in and giving you a quick demo on how this works with our secure network analytics, formerly known as Stealth Watch, and how we do rapid threat containment. So if we're sitting here on, a, on an endpoint, we're going to launch our VPN and connect. And we're going to authenticate like we normally would to a VPN as an employee in this case. And while that's authenticating, we're going to flip over and go take a look at this subscription. So what we've done is um, we're going to be going through all this. But what you just saw is we were subscribed looking at an event and we can see all this good information where the employee just logged in, how they logged in, some of the AD attributes that they logged in with. Um, so this is the raw PX grid session information that's coming out. Um, and you can see protocol information. We can even see the uh, TrustSec security group right there. We can see IP addresses right for the endpoint. We can see all this good stuff. And basically in the case of, of uh, secure network analytics, this is how it maps a random IP address to a specific user or device. It knows when that session started and knows how long that IP address is good for with that user and now can make better correlations in the things that it does. And so if we go and look at our ICE live logs, right? Here is the authentication for that session, just like you would normally expect. So you can see the employee that came in, how they're authorized in, the, in, our, in our policy. It profiled it as a Windows 10 workstation. Uh, and we can see the security group they got authorized to. So if we flip over now to secure network analytics, we move over to monitoring and take a look at the hosts. Uh, secure network analytics will organize the hosts according to basically their threats that they uh, appear to have. So at the top is the most threatening thing, and that's our endpoint that just logged in. But otherwise, they're sorted uh, according to this matrix over here. And you can see it's correlating things to see a concern index, the target index, uh, recon, command and control, exploitation, and DDoS, right? So if it's, if it's emanating these problems, you're going to have a higher concern index there. But if we drill into it, let's say this is our, our, our threat whenever the administrator logs in, uh, they can drill down and, and do some more investigation here to see what the traffic is and what kind of traffic they're sending. Um, how often does this user log in? Is this normal? Is this atypical? What's going on? Have we seen this thing before? And then if we uh, go take a look at the ICE ANC policy, we have the ability to apply manually any one of these changes of authorization. I like the new from Orbit, that's a fun one. Uh, well, we're gonna just do the investigate and we'll go ahead and save that. And that's gonna send that ANC request over to ICE to do the change of authorization on that endpoint. We did this manually because I don't have all the cool tools to actually do a simulated attack or ex exploit or something like that. Um, so we're just gonna see that there's that change of authorization in our live log that just happened. So we updated the authorization policy applied a new security group so that should stop it from being able to go do anything else and if we take a look at that session again we can see we have a new sequence for the session same information on on the who but take a look we have a new updated security group just like we saw in the live log for quarantine systems and you'll notice that we also terminated that vpn connection in that process. So now if the user tries to log back in, um, they can go ahead and do that, but they will actually be subjected to that same overriding authorization that was applied by Secure Network Analytics. So that is how we're able to go through and rely on the intelligence of other security platforms with PX Grid. We, we let them know immediately when a new endpoint comes on, they're able to make correlations, track things, 
and determine if we should be uh, quarantined or or have their their authorization changed. So the way we like to describe this is we think of ICE being the network directory. So we know everything that's out there on the network as it comes in or leaves, right? And this gives us what we call context, kind of the who, what, when, where, how, why uh, of that endpoint being on the network. And this is extremely useful for, like I said, a lot of other security services. And so these are an example of our partners on the Cisco Security Technology Alliance that have basically signed up to be either like MDM partners or uh, PX Grid partners. They use these things to help secure networks for our customers. And the way they're doing this is usually they subscribe to some of these topics in ICE, like I said, the, the session directory to get, to get information out. And uh, so we share that context with them. That's what happened in the case of Secure Network Analytics. And we'll go through some other examples and show you how that works with others too. Uh, another option is they can actually share information back with ICE. And this is something that happens for our partners that are doing uh, like profiling. Uh, if we have uh, we have vertical specific partners in like manufacturing and healthcare, uh, and, and they do um, very specialized profiling of, of these endpoints, and they provide more detailed information back into ICE to help us classify those. Uh, the other way is much like you just saw, if something happens, they're able to call that adaptive network control uh, API and help us mitigate a problem on the network dynamically. And then finally, there's also the option for someone to, another partner to publish something and for another partner to subscribe and ICE really isn't even paying attention to it. So that all that capability exists today within PXGrid. So we used to have a PXGrid 1.0 um, that has since been uh, sunsetted or deprecated um, as of ICE 3.0. Once you're running ICE um, 3.0 or 3.1 and above, you must use PXGrid 2.0. Uh, and the good news is that, you know, all this, a lot of the Cisco products have it uh, already. So that's, that's not really a problem. And it PX grid 2.0 has actually been there since ICE 2.4. Uh, so we gave a, uh, several years there for people to transition their implementations to PX grid 2.0. And really it's just based on WebSockets and REST APIs is much, much more scalable and based on open standards. So uh, the one thing I want to mention is that uh, if for some reason you have a large network, and a separate PX grid node. And if for some reason it becomes disconnected uh, from the PAN, there are a few, um, there's you know two scenarios really where you're gonna have a problem and that is for doing new PX grid registrations or sessions to, to talk with it because it goes through uh, the PAN to do that. Otherwise um, it's completely independent. So the way this works, like I said, is we have endpoints coming in and we share that context out with our security partners. And one of the most important things we can share with them is that concept of a scalable group tag or a trust sec tag. And the reason for that is because that can help uh, them correlate or summarize a lot of the traffic that they're seeing into a nice little named security group rather than having to uh, map a bunch of ACLs uh, it can be easier just to give it a name group and then you can have a name group talk to another name group and it's much uh, easier for humans to understand, kind of like DNS versus IP addresses, right? You're able to use a name tag and it's much, much easier. Uh, and the other thing that happens in the case of secure network analytics is it has the concept of host groups um, and you can do it by, by security group tag and that helps correlate traffic uh, based on those tags. You can see are things flowing as you would expect from one group tag to another. And uh, that allows you to do basically an, an audit with your with your trust sec stuff. So those are some of the, the, the cool things we do. Um, when it comes to the, some of our third party partners, um, what happens is we get something like, we let Jim, our trusted employee on, he gets full access to the network because he's authenticated properly, all of his credentials are right, right? Uh, but then at some point he's surfing the web in the day and he downloads an infected PDF or Word doc or whatever. He clicks on that link, right? Um, and he gets some kind of a, a, a payload downloaded. Uh, but fortunately, AMP uh, is able to detect that and it's detonated in the, in the sandbox in the cloud. And it is able to have 
um, just like in Stealth and in, in uh, Stealth Watch, uh, Secure so Network Analytics, it's able to. Um, the operator can trigger the adaptive network control and quarantine that device, right? So that's one way to do it. We saw that happen in, in Stealth Watch. There it is again. I keep saying Stealth Watch, just bad habits. So Secure Network Analytics. Uh, the other one that I really like is vulnerability assessment. So we got our our employee Jim. He's just having a bad day. Uh, so he's coming in, but we you know the credentials match, so we let him into the network. Uh, but then with PX Grid, we notify the the scanner to go check in for vulnerabilities. And guess what? It turns out, gosh, Jim, you just aren't keeping that computer up to date. We have some known vulnerabilities, and so we need to quarantine him if there's uh, a problem um, with a CVSS score that's um, greater than than we would normally allow. So all this is kind of tracked in terms of what our partners do, what APIs they rely on, what PX Grid topics and things. We kind of try to track that. Um, in this partners doc. And if you look at it, you can see, like I said, all the the versions they're, they're working with. Um, are, are they doing a rapid threat containment or PX grid or, or what all they doing? It's all in there. So go take a look at that. And if you want to do any integrations, of course, we, we like to share with you our, our ICE integration guides from all these vendors. And some of them aren't necessarily uh, official partners, but uh, they do implement PX grid. So they're out there. All right. So hopefully you guys have a, a good sense of how this works. Um, one of the things I want to tell you about is eventing. So synchronous eventing, I'm sure you're familiar with. This is how REST APIs work. You basically poll, right? You're polling. The problem is that your events, you may have a bunch and you don't get any hits. And then you go too long and then a bunch of events happen and you don't find out about them fast enough. So that's the problem with synchronous or timed polling. But what we're doing differently with PX Grid is we're actually taking advantage of asynchronous event handling. So as events happen in ICE, right, when people log in, we're immediately notifying the listener, uh, which was, you know, Secure Network Analytics before and, and basically anybody else that's subscribing to that uh, that topic in PX Grid. So the way this works is much like you've seen in a lot of other places, like if you think about software publishing, right? Uh, you probably go download um, and update your apps through the app stores. Um, so you've got all these different uh, software applications sitting out there, right? And they're publishing their updates. And then you're out here trying to go update all your devices all the time constantly, right? Like, wouldn't it be a pain if you were to have to go to all these different places with all of your different devices and individually update each and every one, right? It's a lot of work. So what's happened is, we realized that that's a bit of a pain. So now what happens is they all get centrally published to some kind of a, a controlling platform, the app stores. And then you're able just to make a single quick connection, get all your updates, you know, really easily, really fast, except sometimes you got to do your own individual things in Linux, right? Um, because maybe you want more control. So that's fine. But that's the concept, right? Or, or you can do a, a an APT update or whatever you want to do, and it goes and grabs it all for you. So it still has that same convenience um, with those those kinds of distributions. So we're doing a very similar concept with ICE, uh, where we have publishers, controllers, and subscribers. So the ICE nodes can publish and subscribe this information based on what they're doing. Uh, but then you've got all these other partner applications that are subscribing to this data so they can get more information to better secure our customers' networks. And then we also have some of our partners that are publishing data back into ICE. So this is kind of what I was saying earlier about getting that uh, manufacturing and healthcare vertical um, endpoint analysis and uploading into ICE so we can better secure the network because we'll know better, uh, get a better classification for what those devices are. So that's basically how we can do um, all these things. So. We want to get down into the actual more of the APIs and things of how PX Grid works. We have uh, an API gateway that we added into ICE back in um, 3.0. And then in 3.1 is when we actually made it available for PX Grid. So what this does is we've got all these different services and ports um, at the top, and they run on different nodes potentially. So rather than have to have you worry about all these nodes and ports and things, we created this API gateway so that you can just forget about the port. It'll just magically get redirected to the right service. But I, I mentioned this because we didn't implement it for the 
extensible RESTful services or ERS APIs, the configuration API is nice. We didn't do that until 3.1 uh, and the same for PX Grid. <clears throat> so just be aware of that. If you are wanting to do some of these PX Grid operations like you're seeing today, I believe I, my examples do have the uh, port 8910 for PX Grid, but otherwise if it's 3.1 and later, you really don't need to include that to make your life a little bit easier. All right, so with that, I think it's time to switch over to our ICE node, and I'm going to show you how to get things started real quick. Uh, what we want to do is basically uh, come in, and first thing I want to do is I want to show you PX Grid services if you haven't seen them before. And you can see by default, PX Grid is disabled. So uh, we can just follow this link over to our ICE nodes. And I'm just doing a single standalone node for this demo today. But if you can go into your individual nodes in ICE and you can turn on these different services, right? And PX Grid is down here at the bottom. We can turn it on. And uh, PX Grid Cloud, uh, we can talk a little bit about that. Uh, basically, uh, for cloud-based services, we have the ability now to use something called PX Grid Cloud uh, so that cloud-based services can connect into ICE in an on-prem environment where it's normally firewalled off. You can't get to it, but now we have a, a basically a broker bridging service uh, called PX Grid Cloud. Uh, we're still waiting on some of our partners to update their, their PX Grid Cloud capabilities. So when that happens, you can bet we'll have another webinar on that. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, just know that PX Grid does require an Advantage license. So if you want to use it, you got to have at least uh, one of those installed on your system. Always recommend people get um, you know the minimum number at least of the Advantage licenses and the uh, uh, Premier licenses so that they can uh, take advantage at least of some of the features that are out there and play with those. So this is a great example of how if you have it, an Advantage license, you can go ahead and play with PX Grid today. The other thing we're going to do while we're here is I want to head over to settings and I want to turn on my APIs. So if I go to API services, I'll turn on the ERS APIs. We'll be making use of those and save that. And uh, the only other thing I did is I did join this to Active Directory, so we'll be able to take advantage of um, authenticating with that. And I think, um, oh, I haven't added my network devices. That's what I need to do. So no network devices are added, but just to make it really quick and fast, if you're looking for a quick you know, way to do this in the lab, I come over here to the default network device, turn on enable, enable it down here uh, and give it a shared secret. And you can see my secret is secret, no longer secret, but that's okay. I trust you guys today. All right, so that's been saved off. Uh, and now whenever my network device makes a request, it should be fine to go through. It won't get dropped. So with that, let's head back over to PX Grid. Okay, um, so you can see it looks like we've already got some connections. And this is really just from the internal um, ICE nodes. I told you that we already had um, some ICE nodes um, that we're going to be connecting um, and sharing information. So that's all that is. And if we look through here, you can see there's some of those connections. And one other thing we want to do is we want to come over to the settings. And in the case of connecting with certificates, um, we can go ahead and automatically approve anybody connecting with a certificate. And uh, we're going to be doing it with a username password today, uh, since certificates can be a little hard for some people. So we're just going to keep it simple with, with passwords. We'll save that. And um, we should now pretty much be ready to go. Um, uh, we're going to flip back to some slides and I just wanted to show you, like, this is the basic setup to get things going and we should be able to do uh, a network authentication. In fact, I should probably, um, do that with my laptop just to be sure. So if I flip back to the live logs, looks like somebody has been trying to come in already. Um, I have my iPad here. I want to try and join. A test network. Okay, it looks like that went through. So if I refresh my screen, there he is. Okay. Thomas hit the default. 
basic authenticated access permit access. Okay, that's good. There it is. All right. All right, so that's working. Uh, all those little things I did to prep it, uh, we should be good to go. So you can see if you want to do a test in the lab, it doesn't really take that long to set up ICE. The defaults are, they work out pretty well. Uh, I didn't even change any, any policies and it just worked with, Act, with Active Directory. All right, now we can go back to our slides. Whoops, that was the wrong button to hit. Let's see if... All right, this is where we want to pick up at. So the Platform Exchange Grid is a protocol framework defining control mechanisms to facilitate machine-to-machine -machine communications. What the heck does that mean? Well, basically control mechanism, this allows us to have a method of authenticating and authorizing services and other uh, machines or users can come in and discover those services. Um, when they get those services, they now have a way to consume data. And PX Grid is basically, you know, data format neutral. We don't care what you do, what what format you use, um, as long as the other the uh, subscribing party can understand it and know what to expect. That's all that matters. And then this idea of machine to machine means that um, you're probably not doing this with a human. You've got another computer or application or service that's consuming this data. And that is why um, we try to use certificates, not instead of passwords. So as long as it's trusted and authorized, you're able to go ahead and get whatever you need there. Now, when we talk about the, the data framework that we're controlling access to, these are some of those services that I was talking about. We have quite a few of them. Uh, we're not going to go through all of them today, uh, but uh, the ones that are the the most popular are basically the the session service right here, uh, and then for uh, the the capabilities where they're sharing profiling details. Um, Endpoint Analytics is the one that we use for the the Cisco product that does that. Uh, and then where is the other one? I'm trying to find Asset Inventory. Might be, might be AI agent asset inventory. That's how they share data through um, with the other third party um, uh, applications that they wanna provide more profiling data into ICE. So there's that. Um, when we do this, we do it with WebSockets. So this is a way that you can do it. Could be, we're gonna do it in Python, could be done in, in JavaScript or any other language. Uh, but basically it's a way of, um, basically like a chat message where you can have two-way communication uh, with an open persistent connection. So that's really nice. Uh, the way we we bundle up commands is done through something called Stomp, the simple text-oriented messaging protocol. This is basically just a way to um, organize the, the messages um, as they come down the, the chain. Uh, we're not gonna get into that level of detail with these, um, the tools we're using already have already take care of this for us. We don't have to worry too much about it. Uh, but some caveats I do want to mention when we work with PXGrid APIs is that the, the API methods are all using post methods, and we'll go through and you'll see some of those. Uh, and everything is done with JSON. And then of course, um, you'll get HTTP status codes when you do it. Uh, so just like, you know, previous webinars we've done on using ICE REST APIs, you know, it pretty much works the same. We're going to go through, and if you've seen my previous webinars on it, it, it we're going to do everything just the same on, on the command line so you can see how that works. Then for authentication, like I said, we can do password or certificate based. Um, we're going to do the password, uh, really easy to work with, really simple. Um, but it's going to take a little bit of work, but just follow along and, and I think you'll you'll understand how it works. And if you want to do it, I wanted to give you a very concrete example so you'll understand because it's, it's really confusing if you go through and read the documentation for the first time, how exactly that works. <clears throat> so we have an ICE session. This is the service. Uh, inside of a service, we can actually bundle uh, multiple capabilities. Uh, the first is we have the topics that I've been talking about. We have a session topic um, that has that 
awesome detail I was showing you with Secure Network Analytics, where it, it sends it out uh, to our partners and they're able to uh, make use of this information. And we can also get things like user groups uh, in this particular service. So we can subscribe to these and get updates to them as they happen. Or we also have the ability to make REST API calls to do certain queries on those sessions or those groups. So it kind of has this, the service has multiple options on how you want to connect to it and get information from it. So this is probably the most popular one. Um, but then we also have the one for TrustSec to get updates about the different security group tags and if some have been deleted or updated, things like that. Uh, and then, of course, you can do you can query query it as well to see um, what the 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 mappings are and the SGACLs and, and things like that. Uh, the ANC Adaptive Network Control. So this is the one that I think probably excites the most people. I don't think we're quite going to have time to get to this today. That's probably a really good topic for uh, the next one. But this is what people ultimately really like to use TrustSec for is the adaptive network control. So um, here you're able to actually find out what are the policies uh, that that you can do on a on a with a particular uh, service or endpoint, and then we can get status and we can actually go ahead and um, find out policies of, of different endpoints. So all of this can be triggered through these different APIs. You can find out the policies, you can query them, delete them, find out the endpoint status with the policies and actually um, apply the, the endpoint policy. That's the actual adaptive network control that, that you saw us do earlier. So that's adaptive network control. And then uh, we have another one for TrustSec. Again, just kind of getting a sense of um, all of the different uh, policies and mappings um, all in one policy download. So this is what happens when services want to use ICE um, for keeping up to date with, with TrustSec. They'll go ahead and download this session so they can see all of the different um, source group mappings and SGACL, basically getting the whole matrix all in one download. So that's what that's for. Um, and finally, the endpoint asset. Um, this is this is really useful, like I said, for getting the asset data. Um, this is where our partners can submit additional data for ICE. Like here, you can see IE2000, so it's going to be an industrial um, kind of product. And we'll, we'll get better details through these custom attributes they can send us so we know how to better categorize an endpoint. All right, so let's get into PX Grid. So what we're going to do is I'm going to flip over <clears throat> into code mode uh, and I have a doc, not there, there, that I've put everything together um, and hopefully we'll walk you guys through all this. So what we're going to do is I have a, just a projects directory where I do all my stuff. I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, I'm going to create a directory for PXGrid tutorial and I'm going to go ahead and CD into it. Um, I recommend you do something like this. And I'm going to go through the whole process um, of installing uh, everything into a, an environment. So I'm going to create a, a, an environment here. So there's a bunch of commands that, that we can run. Um, one thing is when we're doing Python, it's always good to make sure you have uh, pip and it's upgraded. I think I'm all good there, so nothing to worry about there. Then I use what's called a virtual environment. I use pip env for this. And what this is doing is basically making sure that I have the ability to run. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna be running Python 3.11. And it keeps everything uh, separated. If I'm working on different projects and different things that have different requirements, uh, it keeps it really simple so that I, I don't get uh, conflicting packages or have certain problems that are incompatible with each other in my in my main host. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to install something called PXGrid Util. Uh, this is actually a library written by our, our engineers to, in, to install some of these PXGrid utilities that we're going to be using in Python today. And then we're also going to be installing something called the requests library. If you're familiar with Python, you probably know requests. It's one of those popular packages out there for doing HTTP requests. And finally, we're also going to rely on WebSockets. 
So I'm going to install that into our environment as well. And finally, we're going to launch into our shell using pip env shell. All right, so you see when I did that, my prompt changed from the single um, path to having this little, this uh, per parenthetical uh, directory name. And now if I do pip list, we should hopefully see um, the things I just installed, pxgrid util, WebSockets, requests, all that stuff. So we can see all of our packages that have been installed in this little environment. It doesn't affect the rest of my computer. So that's cool. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is curl. Uh, and uh, I've already got curl installed on this computer, uh, but in order to use it, um, what we typically do is something like this. Again, if you've been in my other webinars, you know, I think you know how this works. Uh, I'm gonna put a big long command line in here and we're gonna parse through it so you, you understand what's going on. Uh, I turned on the APIs earlier. Uh, and so we're able to do a, a REST API call. So we're gonna do curl. I'm trying to ignore the digital certificate. Uh, so I put it as insecure. Uh, I do have a signed certificate on, on this uh, node, but I know a lot of you probably don't in your lab. And so I wanna make sure you know what that flag is so that it works. Uh, location means if there's any kind of redirection, it just does, it automatically uh, follows the redirect in HTTP. Uh, this says, uh, thank you for giving us JSON uh, in our response. That's what we prefer to see. And then these are my username password credentials, admin and ice is cool. So uh, we're gonna fix this here real quick, but I just wanted to show you what this looks like and make sure my, my APIs were up and running okay. And then finally, we're gonna do a uh, get request uh, at this URL uh, to get some ice node information. So this is my ice node. <clears throat> and you can see I have these services running. I, I, I have session and profiler on by default. I didn't do anything there, but you saw me enable the PX grid service. So now we can see that it's up and running on this node. So that's cool. Um, but the next thing I want to do is since we're all talking, you know, we, we should all hopefully be security conscious people. Uh, and this is really, really bad to, you know, show people your password right there on the command line uh, so they can snoop it or whatever. So I'm going to install some environment variables. So normally what I do is um, if you use the end command, you can see what your environment variables are. Uh, so I've got a, a bunch going on here. Uh, nothing's too secret in this one. Uh, what you can normally do is you can do a bunch of export commands. So I'm gonna show you what mine looks like in this case. I keep it in a dot secrets folder and I'm gonna do ice.sh. Um, so these are a bunch of my, um, these are fairly ephemeral, um, but I basically just do a bunch of variables uh, with some values. In this case, my host name, which you just saw, I'm gonna use that over if I have, if I have other instances with PAN and MNT and PXGrid, I'm just gonna reuse that host name. Um, I have my admin, my ice is cool that you just saw that I use, I'm gonna use it in a variable name instead. And I got a bunch of other options that I, that I, that I use. Um, I also have this pxgrid client username and password. We're gonna replace this password with whatever uh, pxgrid gives us, but at least I have it there sort of as a, as a placeholder. So there you go. Uh, what I need to do now is I need to source all of these and put them into my environment. So one more time, I'm gonna go back to that .secrets file. And I am going to source it and that's gonna put it into my environment. So now when I do env, now you can see all those things are actually sitting in my environment. Uh, this is a much more secure way of, of, of doing things. Uh, so you're not showing people your password when they're walking by or you're sitting in a coffee shop or something. Um, you don't have to actually, I wouldn't show it to them like this, but I'm showing it to you as a learning exercise, of course. So now that that's been done, uh, we can change up that command that we did earlier with curl and we can Basically the same command, but now instead of showing you my plain text username and password, I'm hiding it behind variables. And same thing for my host name. And if I do the command again, yay, my connection works. So um, everything's working the same as it was previously. I just, I'm using variables in my shell. So there we go. Um, one other cool thing I wanna show you is that there's a uh, another tool called JQ or JSON query that we can use. And what we're gonna do there is if you just append, you pipe it into JQ, uh, we should be able to get pretty printed output. So instead of having just 
you know, straight, straight up black and white text um, actually adds a little bit more formatting and also uh, kind of highlights the, the, the keywords and the values for each of these things. So, uh, so hopefully, I think now we're all ready to get started, but I wanted to show you all those tools if you haven't done those before. Maybe you learned something new today with those. So what we want to do is um, go ahead and create our PX Grid account. I'm going to give you a really big, long command here, and we'll walk through it and see how this works. So we're going to do curl. Can I take? I can't take the highlighting away. Sorry. Uh, we're going to include headers. It's okay if the certificate's not trusted. Redirect. Uh, please give us JSON. Um, or please give us JSON. We're going to send you some JSON. That's what the content type means. Uh, we're going to do a post request. We're actually going to send some data into ICE. This is the ICE uh, PX Grid node on port 8910, and uh, we're doing a control operation, which is to create. A, a, a username account. And in this case, like I said, remember this is machine to machine, so it calls it a node name. It doesn't call it a username, it calls it a node name. And so we're going to pass the data in as JSON, and we're going to say, uh, please create a node name for me called PX Grid Demo User. And so when I do that, ta da, it worked. Uh, we got a 200 response back, that means it was good. And you can see node name, PX Grid Demo User, and the password that it's giving us, it randomly generated this password for us. And so uh, this is the password that we're going to update uh, in our environment. So let me paste this in here, and I'm going to take this. And now in my environment, I will have that new updated password that I need to use when doing this operation. So. What we can do next is we can go to what's called an account activate. So if we want to go ahead and use this account with PX Grid, um, we next, let me go ahead and clear this out, need to do an account activate. So all the other things up here are all the same. Um, we're going to be using, authenticating with our PX Grid client username that we just did the PX Grid demo user and that crazy password, that random password it just gave us. This time we're gonna be doing account activate and we're gonna send a little message to our PX Grid admin on the ICE node and say, you know, by the way, I need you to activate this and this is the little description you wanna to send to them. So we're gonna do that. Okay, that looks like that was good. Our account state is now pending uh, authorization by our admin. And so what this means is if you go into ICE, and you come over to the PX Grid services and you take a look at your client management, you can now see we have a fresh client in here called PX Grid Demo User, the one that we requested. There's that description we just submitted and you can see the account state is pending. So we can't actually use this until an administrator comes into the GUI and says, okay, I'm gonna approve you. All right, there we go. And if this was done with a certificate, remember it had the auto approval in the settings, right? So it, autom it should automatically do, we wouldn't have to do that. But in the case of a uh, username password, we do need to do it. Uh, but there you go, now enabled and ready to use the APIs. So what we can do is let's flip back over and I'm gonna clear this out. I'm gonna do another command for you. Uh, this time I wanna find out, um, well, actually, I'm going to do the same command. So I'm just going to do up arrow. Let's go back there. Let's do up arrow. So now you can see instead of pending, our account state is enabled. So if you were just waiting and you didn't have a, you know, direct communication with the ICE admin or you're not the ICE admin yourself, um, you could just sit here and poll and check to see when your account is finally enabled and you're able to use it. With that out of the way, um, we can now go ahead and see what we are authorized to do. So clear this and we're going to do an authorization. So the way we do that is, again, all the headers are basically the same. We're gonna send JSON, we're asking for JSON back. We got the PX grid client password. And this time we're doing a control authorization and we're gonna send it in some data and um, what we want to do is, does this 
node name, this user, uh, in this case, do we have what do the ability to do gets on the session directory? That's what we're asking. And it says, yes, you do have the ability to do that. So that's cool. Um, we can go ahead and um, start doing some, some queries. So uh, what we can now do is start to do service lookups, like we talked about. Uh, the way we do that is, got another command here. So what we're going to do is do a service lookup, and this is that ICE session I was telling you about, and it puts out the JSON data. Now remember I told you it's really nice to have JQ in a moment like this, so I'm just going to rerun that command, and I'm going to pipe it through JQ, JSON query, and hopefully, ah, oh, so much better, easier to read, right? Uh, now you can see we have uh, our session data, we've got um, our node name that we're going to be talking to, uh, what the capabilities are, and if we wanted to construct any REST APIs, this is the REST base URL that we would need to use uh, to do that. And so uh, it also tells us that we have a couple of different topics. We could do either the session topic or the group topic, and um, we could go ahead and, and subscribe uh, to that. Um, so the way we're going to do this is um, I want to go ahead and use the, um, there is a PXG subscribe and I appear to have lost it in my document. So I have to go to a different one to get my, my subscribe command, sorry. So I want to do um, the PXGrid utils library that we installed. It has a, a bunch of different commands um, that we can use. I'm going to go ahead and show you that real quick, just so you have a better understanding of, of what's out there. So if I go into uh, I go to Cisco PXGrid, this is our repository for our um, PXGrid code that our engineers have done. And the one we're pulling from, the Python advanced examples, is actually the PXGrid utils package. So it actually has um, a bunch of really cool tools like PXGrid subscribe and session queries and things like that. And that's what we're going to be running and actually gives you some, some examples here. Uh, and this is what we're going to run and we'll be able to subscribe. So this is what you saw that we did to make sure we got the, the package installed. Uh, so I tried to make it simple for you, but these are all the different commands that, that you can run. And what I want to do is give you the uh, first thing is the session query all. So let me see if I can do that real quick here. So I'm going to run a session query all. Uh, I have the host node I'm going to connect to. I've got my username and my password. And if I do that, there it is. So what this is doing is it's basically doing a REST API get. Um, it's giving me a list of all my open sessions right now. And this is my iPad that connected earlier. You can see Thomas, it was authenticated through Active Directory using PEEP. Uh, you have my, my MAC address, as you can see, I authenticated to the .corp SSID. Um, all this good stuff is in here, right? Uh, you can see I was permitted, everything's fine, and my session was started. So what we can now do is, if, if you're just joining PXRift for, for the first time, doing the, the get existing sessions is, is a really cool thing. But then once you've got that list of sessions, now you want to do a full subscribe and get all the live updates, right? So the way you do that is the, uh, the subscribe, the PX subscribe. So let me get that command. I don't have that handy, so I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way. Um, I'm going to clear. I'm just going to go up arrow and I'm going to have to go all the way back to the beginning. Can I just move up there? I can't. I got to do it the hard way. Um, it's always fun when you have multi line Linux commands. 
that's why I often uh, I go create my commands on a uh, text editor first. So px dash subscribe allow us to subscribe. Oh, service and topic, dang it. Ah, here it is. This is the command I was looking for. I did find it after all. Okay, here we go. That's what we needed. We were missing some details there. All right, so we're gonna run the PX subscribe command. We're gonna do it against our host. Use the same node name and password like before. Don't care about the cert. We're gonna ask for this service and we're gonna to subscribe to this topic. So here we go. Not very exciting, is it? The reason why is because it's silently waiting for an event. So what I'm going to go do is I'm coming back to my iPad right now and <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to disable my Wi-Fi. And that should trigger a disconnect event in PX Grid. So here I go. I'm going to turn it off. And usually it takes about five seconds for the event to pop up. Bam, there it is. Okay. So I didn't pipe it through JQ, so it's not all pretty printed. Um, but our first um, element in the sequence, you can see Thomas, all the other details. And look, I'm disconnected. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my Wi-Fi back on and it should magically authenticate for me again. There it is, started, okay. So you can see how I'm getting the update dynamically. It's just sitting here waiting and it's printing out the updates in JSON. So this is basically how all of our partners are getting live updates immediately when endpoints join the network. They get all the details of the IP addresses and uh, security group tags, everything, um, it's all in here. So they'll understand how they can start to correlate information and, and better do their jobs. So there you go. Um, that's how you can subscribe with PX Grid. Uh, I think I've got a few other things I need to flip over to. So in case you are wondering what I've been doing, um, I've been actually pulling the example straight from the stock. So I published this for you all last night. Uh, so if you want to follow along and do these exact same commands, I tried to explain it all in this little tutorial. Uh, this is basically my first draft of this, and I'll continue to update it with, with more examples. But if you're looking for um, basically all the commands that I just did today, it's out there. Um, I did manage to mess up the last publication of it, and I dropped all of the PX grid util commands. So I have to go back in time and push those back out for you. I'm sorry about that. Um, so I'll go do that right after this webinar to make sure you have um, all of these PX grid util command examples in there. So that's the great thing about having revision controls. You can always go back and, and fix whatever you, you fat fingered. So if you want to play with PX grid some more, we also have sandbox labs in DevNet that you can go book and play with. Uh, so if you want to go do that, we actually have some of those available for you. So go to devnet sandbox.cisco.com and you can do that. And then of course we have lots of other resources for you. Uh, Always love to hear from you. Um, we're going to ask you for a uh, feedback at the end of this. So if you have feedback for us, future sessions, uh, what is the next step in the PX Grid content that you'd like to see? Happy to provide that to you guys. Um, I think it's, I think ANC goes without saying. That's what everybody wants to see is how can we actually code up some cool ANC stuff. Uh, so we'll do that next probably. So here's some of the other um, code resources that I was showing you guys and for partners out there. Um, here's some or partner details. Here's additional information. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. Uh, so I do see an outstanding question here from one of our audience members. Uh, the question is, can ICE share users AD group member information to uh, FMC, for example? Yes, so uh, FMC, uh, Cisco's um, Firepower Management Center, they can subscribe to PX Grid, um, just like Secure Network Analytics. In fact, I think, uh, I don't know what slide it was. If I go back, um, I don't know where I had, this, this is the one I'm looking for. Um, you can see, uh, the Cisco Secure Firewall uh, 6.7 and later uh, has the capability of using PX Grid 2.0. So yes, it can do that. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And final question here before we wrap up. When I check the endpoint table in ICE, the information oftentimes is not the most recent as it seems to be cached. 
Live log, however, is more reliable and reflects the actual reality. Uh, where is PXGrid taking the information from when we subscribe to PXGrid? Um, so if you look at the the node data, hopefully you saw um, when we check, when we did a service lookup, you saw something like a little tilde and then an MNT. Uh, it depends on the the data. So ultimately, it resolves to different services among the different ICE nodes. And in this case, it's coming straight from the MNT node or persona. Um, so it's getting it out of the MNT database. 